This is the Paycheck to Daycheck Reselling Podcast. I'm Liz. And I'm Ashley. Together, we have been making money online collectively for over 10 years. Our mission is to help you start, learn, and grow a reselling business and to inspire you to turn your paycheck into a daycheck. The world is changing and we want to help you change with it. Welcome back to another episode of the Paycheck Today Check podcast. Today, we are going to talk about something that I think a lot of us question sometimes, especially around this time of year, and that is what to do when your sales ultimately slow down after the holiday season. We all experience it. It happens to pretty much all of us. Um, I think, you know, especially if you started selling a couple of years ago during like the 2020 chaos. Um, after that Q4, that's kind of like when I started to get into eBay and I and Amazon and I was just blown away by the volume and the amount of money that I made and how busy I was. And it was so exciting all the time. Every day was a new adventure. And then like kind of mid to end of January, like sales still stayed pretty consistent through like the beginning of January to like mid January. And then all of a sudden I woke up one day and I'm like, what happened? It was like the the fountain just turned off (laughs) and nothing was happening. And I was like, what the heck did I do? And I I was looking at different, I'm like, I hope I didn't make a mistake somewhere. And sales just stopped dead in their tracks. And it happens pretty much every single year. Um, So we want to kind of give you guys some ideas and helpful tips on what to do when this does ultimately happen. You still might be experiencing the high from Q4. People still have gift cards and are still in spending mode. And, you know, we we find that people spend in the first part of January for multiple different reasons, but they will slow down and they will maybe come to a halt. And we want you guys to be prepared and give you some tips on how to handle that. I feel like it's already kind of happened to us. Got back, so we went to Seattle for eight days to spend time with Casey's family over the holidays. So it was that week uh, in between Christmas and New Year's. And so we put our store on vacation. We didn't sell anything. Mercari and Poshmark, you have to put your stuff on vacation because you can't change the handling time. On eBay, we were able to change the handling time. We had it originally for six days, which was excessive, but we needed to because we weren't going to be back until then. And then every single day we were in Seattle, I would reduce it by one day to where we were right before New Year's and we were back to like the one day handling time. So that way, when we got back to Arizona, we could ship everything out. So that weekend that we got back, we still had a good probably 15 sales. So I felt pretty good about it, even though we had such a long handling time. Um, But now it's, you know, almost a week later and things are slowing down, but it's to be expected. I think a lot of people, especially the newer resellers who haven't experienced a Q4, you just see all these sales and you get so excited, Mm -hmm. but realize it's completely normal. Like, don't think that you're not going to sell anything that, oh my gosh, I'm going to fail. Like have a positive attitude about it and know that just take this as a time to work on other things. And I think that was the point of this episode, how to think of it in a positive way that now things are slow. So it's time to kind of shift your focus instead of like shipping, shipping, shipping. Now you're going to have that time to focus on other things. So I think one of the things you can do is go through old inventory. If you're using a box system or a bin system, this is downtime. Take a box out. It's been probably a good year or six months that your inventory has been sitting there. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't, but however long your inventory has been sitting there, make sure it's still listed. Mm -hmm. And I saw on Instagram, another reseller, I can't remember their name, but they posted that they went through a box and it was a tip that they got from another reseller. And they went through the box and they found two items out of that box that were not listed on any platform. So sometimes those things happen, especially with eBay. I feel like There's times where I check on an item and it's definitely not listed. So take this as a time to go through inventory, make sure everything's listed. Not just that, but look at the listing. What does the listing look like? Why did it not sell? Are the pictures good? Do you have all the correct info? Do you have a good description? Is the price good? Because sometimes prices can go up, prices can go down. So go through your inventory, take this as a time to 
take inventory if you haven't been taking inventory, and then also to check to make sure everything that you have is listed. Yeah, I really like that tip. And that's something that I do every year around this time of year. Um, not just in my business, but like also in my house, like I go through the pantry and all that crap and kind of like declutter and make sure that things aren't expired and you know, whatever. And that kind of carries over into my business too. And I really like that feeling of starting fresh and making sure that everything's organized and where it's supposed to be and we're good to go. It's all listed and, you know, logged into my inventory tracker. Um, you know, everything is where it should be. So because we have that downtime, I don't feel guilty kind of for taking that time now when like, I don't want to take that time during Q4 when I'm like running around like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to make sure I'm shipping everything on time, running out and getting last minute, you know, hot items or whatever the case might be. I just, I just don't have the time to do that then. Um, but now is like the perfect time to make sure I'm organized and ready to start fresh for the new year. The next tip that we have is actually my personal favorite, and that is to spend more time sourcing or researching items to sell. So if you are, you know, thrifting, this is like a really great time to spend more time in the thrift store because like I just said, people are purging and going through things in their closets and they want to start fresh and new and organized. So a lot of people are donating stuff right now. Um, this is a great time to be in the thrift stores looking for new stuff to source and then resell. If you're doing retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, wholesale, this is a great time to spend more time trying to find refillable inventory. Um, I love trying to find new items that I can source again and again and again all year round and they just keep selling. I build my business wide like that and then up kind of like a, a pyramid with like the hot bolo items at the top. But, but the the bulk of my business on eBay specifically is items that I can find again and again and keep selling. Those things do change sometimes. You know, sometimes they discontinue items or you just can't find them for a good price or the price increases, whatever the case may be, or the demand just drops. So I kind of reevaluate all of those refillable items and try to find a couple more to add to my list of things that I'm always sourcing. It's a good time to spend time doing more research uh, because we have the time now. I see on social media some of the reseller resolutions, and I've seen a lot of people, one of their resolutions for this year is to not have a death pile. And I, I, I get it. I get that we don't want to have a bunch of inventory sitting there, but I had kind of an aha moment when we were in Seattle. Phoenix thrift store prices are definitely increasing. We all know it. They're, today was the first day that they weren't doing dollar day. It's $2 day. So they are raising prices. We went to the thrift stores in Seattle, Value Village, and it's owned by Savers or same company. We have Savers down here and it was a thrift store and I did a reel about it. I could not believe the prices. I was blown away. The prices were so high. Casey and I, we question how on earth can anyone be a reseller and use thrifting as a place to source? And it was just kind of one of those moments where I'm like, well, what if that happens down here? It was actually a scary moment for me thinking, what if we get priced out of thrifting? I like the idea of this right now, people are donating they're not going to be able to price everything really high because they're going to have so much stuff. Take this time to go thrifting, get items. I think it's okay to have a death pile, money pile, whatever you want to call it, if you're consistently listing. So we're not saying to not list. We're just saying take advantage of the extra time that you have right now because things are slow. Go out and get more inventory. Also take the time to drive to different areas different thrift stores, different discount stores. Try to find other places to source your inventory. I think a lot of us get stuck on our, you know, the ones that we can count on, the route, like you said, when we were talking last episode about tracking your mileage, you just kind of go to the same stores. But I think really this year, especially, we're going to have to be very creative with where we're sourcing our inventory. And this is the perfect time to build up your inventory, go out and source and get those items because you never know when you're not going to be able to find things. Yeah. Something that I remember 
hearing from another reseller or reading about from another reseller when I first started reselling. And I thought this was so creative was to reach out to people that are local to you or make a post on like Facebook, uh, Facebook marketplace next door, um, uh, you know, those kind of apps and ask if people are cleaning out their closets or, you know, if you run a consignment business, this is a really great time to start telling people what you do and, you know, getting the word out there that you run a consignment business and you're looking for inventory. Because like we said, you know, before people are cleaning out their closets. Um, a lot of, you know, places in the country right now, it's really, really cold. So they're not doing garage sales. Um, estate sales might be a little bit limited, but if you find, you know, if you do enough research and you find the right people, maybe you can go look through their, you know, what they're putting aside right now for the garage sale in the spring or summer, and you can buy it ahead of time before they even have a chance to put the garage sale together, do a whole buyout and you you beat everyone to it. Congratulations, you know, and you're going to have inventory to list and you're probably going to get it cheaper than you would have at like a garage sale or an estate sale. So just some, you know, things to kind of get the wheels turning for you guys. There's a lot of different ways and creative things that you can do to get your hands on some really good stuff this time of year. All right. So the next one is going to be the total opposite of what we just shared about going out and sourcing more and spending more time on certain things. But also, this could be the perfect time to take a break from reselling. It is okay to take a break. Maybe you put your store on vacation for two weeks, you go on vacation somewhere, you take a road trip, you just spend time with family. Maybe you take that time to clean your house and do, you know, those other tasks. But I think a lot of us don't realize how much work it does take to to be a reseller and how you can get burnt out. I know I, I've talked to other resellers and it is very easy to get burnt out on reselling. So one of the things during this time, since it is slow, take a break. Yeah, I, I was wondering, so Liz wrote this little note on our spreadsheet that we read our notes off of when we record. And I saw that she wrote, take a break from reselling. And I was like, uh, I don't know if I love that, but you know, now that you explain it, like actually, if you're going to take a break at any point in the year, this would be probably the best time to do that. And like you said, go on vacation to go on a little road trip, go do something, you know, with your family, take some time for yourself. If there's, I don't think that there's a better time to do it actually than this time of year when things are a little bit slower. So if you're going to do it, do it now. All right, so the next tip we have for you guys is to make sure that you're up and working on your bookkeeping, pull your inventory and your sales reports for each platform, figure out what your expenses are, your mileage, just do the stuff that you don't want to do anytime, you know, any time of the year. But this is a good time to do your, you know, your uh, bookkeeping and paperwork and all that good stuff that you might have slacked a little bit on during Q4 because we were running around like crazy people. Um, this is a really good time to get organized. And it's going to feel so much better when you know that you're organized and caught up on all that stuff. Um, because when it does start to pick up again, you're going to wish that you were caught up and you took the time to do it. Now, this is also because you're going to have more time. I think as resellers, we have that like want to make money. Like you just have that itch where how can I make more money? And so maybe you take this time to research other ways to make money. Maybe you're only reselling on Poshmark, eBay, Macari. Maybe you figure out ways that you can sell locally. Maybe you look into some of the things that we've mentioned on the podcast, which is Amazon Merch, Kindle Direct Publishing, which is KDP, making notebooks. Amazon Merch is the print on demand where you design t-shirts and they have other things like tote bags and pillows and things like that. By the way, side note, we do have some Paycheck to Daycheck reselling podcast merch that I haven't even told Ashley about, but it is now on Amazon. So I spent the time over winter break 
uploading. So we've got our logo on some t-shirts. Maybe you want a tote bag that you can bring around to different thrift stores, but I'll leave a link down below and you guys let us know what you think about some of the merch that I designed, but it'll give you a good idea of how you can design t-shirts and things like that on Amazon merch. Another thing you could also, so not only thinking about different platforms that you could sell on, maybe getting into other avenues, like I've mentioned on the podcast, private label. We do private label products on Amazon where we use software called Jungle Scout to search the marketplace for products that have a high demand, low competition. We contact suppliers and then we put our label on those particular brands. So if you're interested in that and learning more, we did do a podcast episode on it, but really taking the time to expand your reselling business into more avenues. Yeah. And I think it's also a good time if you're, you know, let's say you're a clothing reseller and things start to slow down. Maybe you want to look into a different niche. So maybe you want to start getting into antiques or flipping furniture or hard goods or something like that. This is a really good time to start dabbling in those things and kind of starting over in your reselling business just with a different niche or cell phones or sneakers or whatever it is that you're interested in. It's a great time to learn something new. All right. So we just want to make sure that you guys throughout this whole thing, stay positive. A lot of resellers, especially newer resellers, tend to get really frustrated around this time of year because they're coming off a great Q4. And like we said, you've had all these sales and it was exciting and you've made all this money. And all of a sudden it just kind of dips off and you're like, now what the heck? And people start to get nervous and frustrated and then they give up. Um, We don't want you to give up. We want you to stick with it. We want to help you get through that, but staying positive and you have to just keep you have to keep plugging along. Um, There's going to be slow times when things just don't sell as much as you need them to or want them to. So learning how to adapt and make it work for you, make those slow times work for you is really important. And one of the things that we didn't mention, but doing your research and knowing that this is going to happen, that this is going to come, I think is really important in like any business, like whatever you're going to do, you need to understand the ebbs and the flows, the highs, lows, all that stuff. Being prepared for it is something that I wish I had been more aware of my first like real serious year of reselling. I would have put more money aside. I would have been better prepared for it and I would have made better buying decisions. Um, Yeah. So that's what I wanted to say about that. So just knowing that it's coming. We probably should have mentioned this before it's, you know, we're in it, but now you guys know for next year, you can be a little bit more prepared and put a little bit of money aside to get you through, you know, the lows. If you guys are watching and listening on YouTube and you have any tips on what to do when things start getting slow after the holidays, make sure you leave a comment down below for anyone who is also watching and listening to the podcast. All right, guys, that's a wrap on today's episode. Thank you so much for listening to the Paycheck to Daycheck Reselling Podcast. Anything we mentioned in this episode will be linked down below in the show notes or description down below. Be sure to share this episode with anyone you think it will help and follow us on social media at P2D Podcast. Thanks again for listening. Keep working towards that daycheck.